Hi, everybody. My name is Susan Searle, and I'm here for Sunwater Spa to do some yin yoga today. Hope you're all having a good day. Um, I know things are a little different. Our schedules are a little out of whack. I know I'm missing about that five o'clock time. I feel like, oh, I need to go teach a yoga class, but there's nowhere to go. So I'm sure you all are feeling sort of the same uneasiness um, with what's going on. So hopefully this practice will be a nice grounding practice for you um, to just sort of be still. <laughs> I'm gonna put some music on for us and we will get started. So go ahead and find a comfortable seat. And you might want to sit on a blanket if you have one nearby, just to lift your hips up. <sighs> Take a full breath in and out. Fill your lungs, fill your belly with breath. <sighs> and then close your eyes. You can bring your hands either on your lap or you can fold them together. And again, just find some still steady breath we'll open our practice today with one chant of om so you're welcome to chant along if you like or just taking the good vibration so take a full breath in exhale it all the way out and then inhale for om Om. Good, and releasing your hands down. So let's start actually standing. I don't know about you all, but I've been sitting a good part of the day on a computer and uh, I need to just move a little bit before we settle into some of our more yin postures. So go ahead and stand up for me. I'm gonna turn this down just a hair. And interlace your fingers, draw your arms up. Let's take a big stretch. Good, soften your knees, pull your belly in, and then lean over to your right side. Ah, just stretch out the whole side body. Good, and then lift yourself back up to center. Let's do the other side. Pull your ribs in, soften through your knees, and come on over for a side stretch. Good, and then back up to the center. Good, release your hands. Take them right out from your shoulders. Pull your palms back, stretch like you're touching the wall on either side. Good, and then lift your right arm up and your left arm. So just take yourself side to side a few times. Just nice and easy, sway back and forth. Mm, finding some space in your body. Good, then come back up to the top. Soften your knees. We're gonna slowly fold down. You get almost to the bottom. Let your hands relax and just hang. So you're actually gonna lay on top of your thighs. Bend your knees a lot. Just roll over. So you can find some roundness in your spine. Good, keeping your knees bent. Take an inhale and begin to roll up again. Arms are heavy. Ah, reach the arms up, stretch tall. And on your exhale, bend your knees and float right back down again. Knees are soft and you're just gonna hang over. Let your neck get long. Take a few yeses with your head. Turn your head no a few times, it's easy. Shake out, pull your belly up and in, and begin to roll up. Inhaling as you rise up, reach your arms up to the sky, stretch tall. And then exhale, let's do that again, fold down. Bend your knees, roll over your legs, just hang. Go ahead and grab both sides, your elbows, and let your head come into the center. Shifting the weight more forward into your feet, lift your heels slightly. 
and begin to straighten your legs to wherever you can comfortably do so. And breathing into your back, and relax your hands to the floor, pull your belly up and in again and roll yourself up, inhaling all the way up. Reach your arms up to the sky, take a big stretch. Let's interlace the fingers again, pull your ribs back, come on over to your right side, take another half moon opening stretch. Keeping your belly and chest reaching up to the sky. And then inhale, lift. Let's come over to the other side. Strong and grounded through your feet. And then inhale, lift up. This time open your arms, take a big swan dive. Come all the way down. Wrap your arms around your legs and you're gonna pull yourself towards your legs. Lift your tailbone. Mm, finding a smooth, steady breath. And then inhale, reverse your dive. Lift all the way up again. And bring your hands to your heart. Bring your elbows in and come on down for a chair pose. Good. So a couple things to look for. You can either have your feet separated or you can have your big toes touched. So if you bring your toes together, you're going to work your legs in. If you want to keep your feet open, make sure your knees are going straight forward. Drop down into your seat. Ah, and then rise back up, inhaling. Open the arms, exhale your breath, let it all go. Reverse swan dive, inhale, pull your belly in to support your back as you come all the way back up to the top. Bend your knees, find your chair pose again, draw your hips back, hands to heart. Beautiful, let's do that one more time. Inhale, rise up. Exhaling your breath, take a big dive off. And then reverse dive, inhale, rise back up. Bring your hands to your heart and then come on down into your chair pose. Good, like the air is thick, reach your right arm forward and your left arm back. Keeping your chest working to the front. And then come back into the middle. Let's do the other side. Again, like the air is thick, you're gonna push it out, turn back and look, keeping your chest and belly facing to the front, kneecaps facing forward. Come back into the center. Good, rise up one more time. Exhale, dive all the way down to the ground. Bending your knees as much as you need to to get your fingertips to the floor. I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see a little bit better. Let's walk our feet back and take a downward dog. Good, so once you come into downward dog, take a few bounces. So just come up and down onto your toes. Shake out your legs, bend your knees. Just shake it out, all the tension. And then finding some stillness. Rock side to side. Stretching the hips over to the right and over to the left. Letting your neck relax. And finding middle again, right in the center. Shift slightly forward, bring your knees down onto the ground. Let's leave our toes tucked. We're gonna lift up into cow pose. Oh, it should feel nice in your back. Good, now find angry cat. Lift your spine, round your back. Push down through your hands. And then release again. Rolling through your spine, lifting your head. And then one more time, lift up for your angry cat. And then release back to center. Let's go ahead and just walk back, lay your belly down onto the ground. Good, just shimmy side to side. You can relax your feet down. Hands are gonna come right along the side of your rib cage. Hug your elbows gently back. Starting with very easy rolling cobra. So let your head be heavy. You're going to roll it up. Your head's going to be the last thing that rises up. And then release, letting your head be the last thing that rolls down. So take this rolling motion in your spine. 
Lifting up and down. It doesn't matter how high you go. If you choose to take a higher pose, try not to lock your arms though. Keep some bend in your elbows. We'll find some movement here. And this is cobra pose. I always like to tell my classes that snakes don't just go straight up and down. So feel free to go side to side. Find your S pattern like you're a snake. Work your shoulders, let your head go, rib cage move side to side. Just enjoy the movement. And then coming back into the center, lowering yourself down. We're going to do the same thing with our legs. So bend your knees and let your feet windshield wiper side to side. And then come back into the center. Release your feet down. Push back into a child's pose. So walk your hands back. Make yourself small. Can you get really small? Can you get onto your hips? Maybe wiggle back down there. And let your forehead come to the ground. Anytime you need to use a prop, you know, a blanket or a pillow, whatever you have at home you can use. You can use that to support your head. If it's too hard to reach it to the floor, if it just doesn't feel comfortable, you can use a, a blanket. So take a moment here in child's pose. Breathe into your back. Ah, try to fill the whole back side of your lungs. This action of having our head on the ground is good for just quieting our nervous system. I'll take another breath or two, breathe into your back. Good. And then lift yourself up to downward facing dog. We'll move just a little bit more, kind of get everything flowing, and then we'll settle into some more quieter yin poses. Good. So let's step your feet together and then lift your right leg up. Just find some stretch. If it feels nice, you can bend that knee and maybe open into a scorpion pose. And then release the leg back down. Let's do the other side. And inhale, lift. And bend the knee if you like, open through your hip. And straighten that leg. And come back down to the ground. Open up your feet wide and rise up onto your toes. Lift your heels and then roll the heels back down. Let's do that one more time. Rise up onto your toes and then roll the heels down. Now bend your knees. Start to drop your hips wherever you can comfortably go. And then rise back up again by straightening your legs. Step your feet in and drop the knees gently to the floor. To keep your toes turned under, and let's sit back, give our feet a stretch. So if you need to, maybe reach back, get that little toe stretch underneath you. So stretching into the soles of your feet. Just waking up all the nerve endings in the bottom of our feet. Take a breath. We're gonna settle into some yin postures. So yin is not really it's not restorative, it's different. We're gonna get in there, we're gonna work. We're gonna hold the poses for a little bit of time, but they're mostly all seated poses. So it's not like we're gonna hold triangle for amount of time. But we hold the poses to go deeper into them and to find some stillness, stillness in our bodies, stillness in our breath, which helps to lead to stillness in the mind. And as I mentioned, you know, this time of um, just sort of unrest that we're all facing right now, this uncertainty, um, yin is a perfect practice for that because yin is about acceptance. And right now we just have to accept where we are. We can't make any changes. We can't, you know, change. I can't make the, the illness go away faster. I can't make the quarantine end. Um, so we have to sort of accept where we are and that's okay just to be there and rest in that. 
All right, let's move into our first pose and heart opening pose. So this is similar to our cobra pose, but we're going to stay with our hips up. First option is to drop down onto your elbows. You can hold right here if you can gently stretch your hands further and it doesn't strain your neck, you can drop down here to open your heart. Now that's where some props will come in handy. Again, if you have a pillow, something off your bed or just a blanket, you can put that pillow right where your chest is. So your hips stay high, you can drop down and be supported. So go ahead and move into that pose. So you can use one blanket, you can use several blankets, whatever you need, a couple pillows, anything that's gonna make you feel comfortable. Because in your yin practice, you want to be able to relax into the pose. So let's come back into this heart opening pose. Hips are up. And then let your arms go soft. Find your breath. And take an opportunity just to feel where this pose is working for you. Where do you feel the, maybe the tension in your body? And then bring your breath there and see if you can relax it. A couple of deep breaths. Good, and then gently walk yourself back up. Finding your tabletop. <sighs> Let's move once into downward dog, just to give it a big stretch back. Lift up your armpits. Mm, pull your belly and ribs up. Keep a slight arch in your low back, stretch down the back of your legs. And then knees come to the floor again. And you can pick your right foot up, step it up between your hands. Walk your hands forward and roll forward in your hips. So here's another great place for some props. You can fill this space here with some pillows, a few stacked blankets. If your back knee bothers you, you can use your blanket underneath your knee. So the point is for you not to have to do any work. The point of the props is to help you relax. So again, it doesn't matter what you have, you know, you can find some blankets, you know, you can uh, raid your kid's closet and put up a pile of dirty clothes. Nobody's gonna see but you, whatever you need. So you can fill this space in here so you can relax into it. You can untuck your back toes and even bow your head and just take a few breaths here in your hip. Good. Roll back, and we're going to switch to the other side. Taking the knee on the ground, step the other foot up, walk forward. And you might find that you need to support yourself by putting your hand on two books or, you know, two soup cans, whatever you have nearby, if it's difficult to put your hands all the way onto the floor. Let yourself just sink gently into it. Untuck your toes and the back foot and relax. Look at this front knee though. You want to see that that knee is sitting right over your heel. What you don't want to do is have your foot in and your knee way forward because that stresses out your knee. So make sure you have a good foundation there. And then soften your entire body. Take a deep breath and release into the pose. So you're working for your edge. Your edge is that place where you feel the work but it's not so hard that you can't stay in the pose. Good. Take another breath here. Fill the entire backside of your body with breath. And then release, roll back. Good. Nice. Let's find pigeon pose. That's pretty much everybody's favorite pose. So we'll take our right leg forward. You can bring that knee up between your hands. Your hips are a little bit 
op more open, you can move the knee to the outside. So here's where those props will come in handy again. When you come into the pose, if it's hard to get your right hip on the floor, that's what you wanna fill up. Again, looking for something to fill up that space. Could be a blanket, pillow. So that you sit on it and that you feel like you're supported. Okay? And you're not falling over onto one side. So again, you put as much as you need to underneath this leg to help you feel square and centered in the pose. So we're gonna push our fingertips into the ground, lift our chest and reach up. So proud pigeon, shoulders come down your back. Take a full breath here. And on your exhale, walk yourself out for your sleeping pigeon. This is another place. If you wanna stack some pillows right underneath your head, you can do that. You can also interlace your fingers, create your own pillow. Or if you can gently put your head to the floor, it doesn't bother your neck. You can even stack your hands right here to put your forehead down. Good, so take an opportunity to sink into that pose. Breathe, be in the pose. And again, accept whatever comes up, whatever sensation that you're feeling in your legs, in your hips. And see if you can really release and let go. Use your breath to help you. So remember I said, we're looking for stillness in the mind. And that comes first from stillness in the body and then stillness in the breath, which leads to stillness in the mind. Go ahead, take another full breath here. And then gently make your way out of that pose. Come up onto all fours. And rock your hips side to side. Good. And let's do pigeon on the other side. So we're going to lift the left leg up. Walk your right leg back. And again, here's where those props will come in underneath your left hip. Relax your toes, press your fingertips on the floor, take a slight arch here. So open your chest, shoulders down, feel a stretch in your hips. Good, and then on the next inhale, walk yourself out, propping your head wherever you need to so that you can totally relax in your pose. This pose is such a grounding pose, centering pose. We're laying on the ground, feeling support of the earth. So we're looking for stillness, stillness in the mind. Comes with, from stillness in the body first. So sometimes when we are in a, a pose where we have to hold the pose for a longer period, we tend to fidget around. And fidgeting is a sign of a distracted mind. So try to commit to being still in your pose. Can you stay here and just be in the pose? Take another breath or two. <sighs> Big exhale, maybe even open your mouth and let it go at this point. Let the breath release. Another full breath in. And then on your exhale, come on out of your pose. Lift up for a downward dog. If you don't want to do downward dog, that's totally fine. You can just stay right here and do a cat pose. Just let your hips sway side to side. Now walk your feet to the top of your mat. 
fold your arms again, grab hold of your elbows and just hang for a moment. Tip the hips up to the sky. Let your hamstrings feel long. And then relax your hands to the floor. Pull your belly up and in to support your back. Soften your knees and begin to roll yourself up, inhaling all the way up to the top. And then take some cactus arms. So soft knees, bend your elbows, open your chest, arch, squeezing your shoulder blades together on your back. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, we're going to step the feet out and come about halfway down, letting your elbows rest on top of your thighs. Good. Now from here, find your cat pose. So arch your back up, really rounding your spine. And then find your cow pose. Let your chest melt through you, lift your head. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, roll, roll your back up, find your cat pose. Like it's right in my low back, I don't know about you. And then release. And lift up. Good. So you have options here. You might want to stay here. You can also take your hands to the floor. Maybe walk your feet a little further out. Props again. If you have some blankets or some pillows, you can put those props underneath your hips to help you when you come down into your squat. So either on a prop or, I know some of you probably can do that without a prop, See if you can just hang here for a moment in your squat pose. We're gonna make it just a little softer by walking our hands out and rounding our head down towards the floor. Pull your ribs and belly back and in. Ah, big breath, release. Stillness in the breath. Stay in your pose and just visualize your breath being still. What does that look like? To me, I think of a lake first thing in the morning when the water is completely calm and there's no wind. So imagine your breath like that. It's there. It doesn't mean it's not there to be still. It just means that it's calm. It's easy. It's soft. Stillness in the body, stillness in the breath. Good, and then slowly begin to straighten your legs, turn your toes forward, and hang over in a rag doll. So arms are relaxed, head is relaxed. You're going to shift more weight forward into your big toes. And soften your knees a lot and roll all the way up, inhaling. Arms reach out. Good. Turn your toes out. Exhale. Come on back down. Stop about halfway again. Good. Let's bring our hands on top of our legs. Drop your right shoulder forward. Look over your left. And then the other side. Back into the center and release down. Fingers to the floor, gentle rock side to side. You want to turn your toes out so your knees and toes go the same direction. And so we're going to come all the way down onto our mat again and take a seat. Bring the soles of your feet together. You can walk your feet away from your body slightly. So again, if you have props, pillows, something nearby, you're going to use those in the center here. So you can lay across it and feel supported. Again, you can pile as many blankets or pillows. You might just lean a slightly forward. So again, you decide how high you want to go. If you don't have any props, that's fine too. You can use your arms, walk your hands out, and just bow your head. 
So let's take a full breath. See if you can just gently pull your ribs back into your body. Root your tailbone and your sit bones on the floor. Allow your head to hang gently forward. Stillness in the body. Stillness in the breath. Stillness in the mind. So we start off with a nice calm body, no movement, no exertion, the muscles are not working. So we release completely in our yin pose. And then we focus on the breath, helping our breath to be calm and still, which leads to a calm mind. That doesn't mean it's an empty mind. It doesn't mean your thoughts go away. It just means that it allows you to be here and now. It allows you to be more present fully in this moment. Inhale, begin to slowly roll yourself up. Good. You're going to tuck your left leg in and pull your right leg a little closer. We're going to do that same pose, just one leg straight and one leg bent. Blankets can be out front if you want some support. We're going to walk our hands forward, coming down to where your edge is. Again, that place where you feel the work, but it's not too difficult to maintain this pose. Allow your entire right leg to be soft, so you don't have to flex your foot. You can just let your toes relax. Pull your ribs gently back into your body. And then allow your head to roll forward. Taking some breaths here in this pose. Remembering that our practice is about coming into our body. It's about discovering ourselves through our bodies. And then take another breath here. And gently walk yourself up. We're going to stay with our legs just how they are, but turn your whole upper body. Now, if you have props, they can go over the top of your leg. Again, to support yourself, you're going to come right over your right leg. You can also roll a blanket to put your forehead on it. Anything that makes you feel comfortable and, again, supported so that you don't have to do work. Because if your muscles are working, they can't relax. So that's why we want to be supported. Take a deep breath. Exhaling into your pose. Soften your body. And just be here. Accepting where you are in your pose. And just accepting what's going on all around you. Again, there are things that we cannot control. There are things happening that I can't change. And to spend time worrying about that, it's just gonna cause more stress and anxiety. So let's just be where we are. Let's trust. Walk yourself up and let's turn around to the front. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to extend the leg out. First, we're going to come forward. Again, if this is uncomfortable, you can sit on a blanket as well to help tilt your pelvis. We're going to walk forward, finding an easy bow. Big breath in and out. 
And then just notice where this pose is working for you. I tend to feel a lot of this in my low back, on my right side. So I'm gonna bring some breath there, try to release. Taking an opportunity just to surrender to this moment. I know sometimes surrender is a word we don't like. <laughs> We're like, ah, I'm not surrendering, I'm not giving up. But I don't think we should think of it in those terms of giving up. It's more about just surrendering to now, what's happening right now. Surrendering again, not giving up, but surrendering into what is. Again, trusting that all will be well. And then with an inhale, lift yourself up. And we're gonna turn over our straightened leg. Props again if you want, can fill up this whole space here, or you can put something for your forehead to rest on. Again, if you don't have any props or any blankets or anything nearby, that's okay, just use your arms. Walk them out, let them support you. And then just gently bow, letting your forehead reach down towards your leg. You can soften this ankle, you don't have to flex your foot. Just let it be relaxed here, more yin-like. Getting into your deep connective tissue. So it's different than some of our more active yoga practices. Coming back to stillness in the body, which leads to stillness in the breath, which will bring us to stillness in the mind. Take another breath as you walk yourself up. Let's take both legs out. So make a fist in your hand. You're gonna bring it to your low back. You should feel a nice curve in your low back. If your back curves the other way, if your hips roll back, then please sit on a blanket or a pillow because it will tip your pelvis forward and you want that action. It's like a big bowl here, you're tipping it forward. You want that action in your hips. Soften your knees. So I like to dig my heels into the floor and just kind of gently draw my knees in so that I feel like they're popping up and then soften. So again, we don't want any tension on the backside of our knees. Walk yourself forward, props again. You can use blankets, pillows, whatever you have nearby to put underneath your belly and roll forward, or maybe even prop your head here. And then once you get comfortable, release everything. <sighs> Let it all go. Inhaling and exhaling. Long, smooth breath. So just sink into this pose. See if you can stay here just a little bit longer. Resist the temptation to move. And breathe into any place where you feel tension in your body.
Beautiful. Take a moment just to walk yourself up. Move any props out of the way. And you're going to roll onto your back. Draw your knees into your chest and squeeze everything down. Good. Now extend your right leg onto the floor. Hug your left knee into the left side of your rib cage. And I like to really use my hands to push down. So I feel that release in the lower side of my back and my hips. And then we're going to switch sides, extending the other leg down, hugging that leg into the side of your body, into your rib cage. And again, strong. I like to use a lot of pressure to really pull that leg into my body. I find it feels really good in my back when I do that. Right, so let's bring both knees up. Extend your arms out. And then you're gonna stack your knees over your hips. Take a deep breath and allow both knees to fall gently to one side. We're gonna do both sides so you can pick a side. Once you get there, everything melts back to the floor. A couple of deep breaths. And then we'll come back in in the center, stacking your knees over your hips. Take another deep breath. And then both knees are going to fall over to the other side. And my candles. <laughs> Full breath in. On your exhale, let everything sink back. Ah, Full breath in and out. And then come back into the middle. Align your hips with your shoulders so you feel straight in your spine. Lift both feet up to the ceiling. And then imagine you have a wall behind your legs. Let your legs be soft. And aim your heels right over your hips. Breathe and let go. I like to even just visualize the blood and the tension coming down. We stand on our legs all day long. So this is just a nice release to go the opposite direction. So let gravity relax your legs. And so we're about to move into our Shavasana. You know, lower one leg down to the ground and the other. Walk your feet wide. If you like, just windshield wiper your knees side to side. Maybe even roll a few times forward and back. And when you're ready, you're going to settle onto your back into your final pose, your Shavasana. If you prefer, you could do seated meditation. Wherever you are, close your eyes. And then using the power of your mind, visualize your entire body. Like you could see yourself, like you were floating over yourself. See yourself resting on the floor. And then with your mind, relax your forehead. Smooth out any rows of tension in your forehead. Relax your eyes. Let them rest heavy in your eye sockets. Remove tension from your jaw, your neck. And bring awareness to your chest. Just soften your shoulders. Relax all the way down your right arm, 
past your elbow into the palm of your right hand and relax all the way down your left arm past your elbow into the palm of your left hand allow your mind to rest in your belly just making note of all the internal organs in your body just how they function without you having to even think about them. Feel your belly fill with breath and empty with breath. Good. And then relax all the way down your right leg, past your knee, into your right foot. Bring your awareness to the top of your left leg and let go of any tension all the way down your leg, past your knee, into your foot. Finally, bring your awareness back to the very top of your head. And then from the very top of your head all the way down your entire body, let go. Accepting where you are right now in this moment. You are perfect as you are. Take the last few moments. Allow yourself to rest. So since you're home, you can stay in your Shavasana. I always like to joke about that in class. Wouldn't it be nice to do Shavasana and just be able to stay? Well, accepting where you are, you can just stay here in your Shavasana. Thank you so much for joining us at Sunwater Spa for our, our online classes. I hope to see you again. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all know peace. And may our words, thoughts, and actions, especially now at this time, lead to greater peace. Missing you all. Hope to see you again soon. Namaste. Have a beautiful rest of your evening.